I'd just like to open up the floor and, and uh, uh, any questions that you have of uh, any of our presenters. So by all means, if anyone wants to start with a question, um, any so I'm going to hand out some information with contact information, a little background on Texas Well and Healthy. I also brought a report from Texans Care for Children where I work. Um, we looked at the situation of, of out, outcomes for children versus the rest of the population. And one of the findings was that um, if, if Texas were able to close the gap for children of color versus white children, um, the economic gain to our state in 30 years' time would be the equivalent of adding another oil and natural gas industry to our state. It's hundreds of billions of dollars if we can close these gaps. So there's some information about that in this, um, in this packet. Um, I have a question. Um, I'm with Avance. I do their policy work. And um, my question is, I mean, first of all, the KUKA's, um uh, research and comments, they come just in time for Halloween, right? Because it's pretty scary. <laughs> so, um, and it looks by, you know, the conversation that um, children of color are being up, you know, with the recent policies enacted by the state, they're um, being setting up for failure already. And um, that's even more scary. So my question, I guess, you know, to um, Mr. Hinojosa is, is there anything being done, um, any, you know, anything being done in, in regards of um, some sort of civil action, of lawsuit or something, since we've already seen this in the past uh, with, you know, the whole, uh, the tracking system or what is being done or do we have to wait till, you know, hopefully we get a more um, minority friendly governor or legislators? I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm curious. Yeah. on on. Uh, of course, when it comes to funding schools, we have that lawsuit that's still ongoing. So we won in February. The state made some legislative changes. We said they were no big deal. They didn't change anything. Other people said maybe they did. So the court's going to hold another trial on that issue of whether or not the system is funded equitably and, and adequately. On the issue of uh, tracking students, we won't know until after the implementation of that. So we're trying to uh, take that on a, on the front end. That's why we're organizing, you know, other people to go in and testify at the state board of education and push for more rigor in all of these different endorsement tracks because that's the best that that we can do. You know, we're fighting against the jobs people. We're fighting against um, even some school districts. I mean, I think it was Dr. Brian Woods who I really commend for doing some great work and continuing the work of folks. But when these new endorsements came out, I mean, he was quoted as saying, oh, this is great. This gives us the flexibility. This gives more opportunities for students. You know, whether or not those are better opportunities uh, for students and exactly how that flexibility will be exercised is what really uh, concerns us, so. Something to that. Um, so in addition to the fact that the State Board of Education will, at its November 20th meeting, be hearing about this issue and that the public can speak against tracking at that board meeting. So that decision is yet to be made. And the, the um, legislators are already arguing that if we don't track kids, then Dropouts will increase, and there's no flexibility, which is what David was pointing us to. That is incorrect logic, and it is um, not necessary to track our kids. Rather, we have to support them to complete high school and go on to college. So that's, that's one piece. The other piece, though, is that every local school board in the state of Texas can opt to offer whichever of those endorsements they wish. And so Austin, Texas, for example, right now is trying to have the local school board pass a policy that says our kids are going to graduate college ready regardless of what the state of Texas is wanting us to do in terms of tracking kids. So that's another opportunity. And then thirdly, and I think very importantly, is that our communities need to understand what is going on in the schools so that parents can make 
um, the necessary, uh, raise the necessary questions about uh, what is being offered, about the decisions that their own child um, is uh, made, uh, is making or forced into making. So uh, there's a lot of work to do uh, in, in that regard. Uh, one other resource available to you, those of you who wish to see some of these uh, uh, statistics and um, related issues on a school-by-school -school basis, if you go to the IDRA website, idra.org, there is a portal called Our Schools, and it gives you by school information about the various issues that were presented in that Quality Schools Action Framework. politics. So my question is, I know as an outsider, what is happening with the demographic shift politically in Texas as this remarkable overview you've provided us, which has to be described as a regression. That's what the numbers seem to show for kids of color. Um, what is happening in terms of voter participation, voter registration, and impact of the emerging ethnic voter in Texas? I'll just touch upon it briefly. I mean, a lot of court action is happening. <laughs> we have a redistricting lawsuit, you know, challenging the 2011 plans, challenging the 2013 plans. There's voter ID litigation. So, you know, the, the numbers just aren't there yet here in Texas and won't be here for probably at least the next uh, decade or so before we finally uh, see the numbers. You know, one of the, yeah, in terms of voters, you know, because you saw how young our population is still. Now, I think the highest percentage of Latino voters in the last election, if I remember correctly, someone from Southwest Voter told me, was between the ages of 18 and 22. And so it's a very young, you know, when they are turning young, when they're turning the age to be able to vote, they are voting, they are starting to get registered, and there's a lot of efforts out there with voter registration drives. Uh, but I think, you know, in, in what, what's funny in Texas, on the funding, equity funding, we actually rely on really strong collaborations with rural school districts, poor rural school, school districts. Because if you're poor rural in East Texas and you're not sitting any near, near any you know, bed of oil, and you're poor in the valley and not sitting any, near any uh, eagle shale, you're basically in the same predicament. So we've used a lot of coalitions between you know, poor rural districts represented by ours and poor uh, rural districts in the valley and even in, here in San Antonio uh, who have helped at least push the equity issue and not make it worse. So. I think one thing that I would add, uh, not so much in time frame, We have lacked investments in the state. Uh, there's historically and still very weak in terms of uh, voter mobilization. So people, you know, kind of talk about investing in a huge red state like Texas, but we haven't seen any real money. And, and you need lots of money. So other than when elections are occurring, you know, in sort of, uh, you know, quite frankly, you know, the politicians coming out to get the vote and maybe sprinkle in a little money, we need that to happen year-round. And so there is a weakness 
in that infrastructure of investment. So just to add that to your, as a point to your question. Um, one other uh, thought, the, um, the 2010 census gave Texas four new congressional districts. And those were primarily the result of Latino uh, growth, I think to the tune of 70, 75% of the growth came with the Latino population. The growth in the demographics have not yet shown up in voter registration or voting uh, patterns. Um, people are trying to uh, change that uh, in terms of your, you know, your, your parallel to what has happened in California with the ethnic vote. Um, 2013 is supposed to be the year in Texas when the Hispanic shift happens when um, Hispanics become the majority in the state. I mentioned that we already are the majority in K-12 schools. But the entire state, 2013, Potter, I think is his last name, who is the current demographer, says that that may happen as early as 2017. Uh, the, the question is, will that show up? in increased uh, voter participation and increased um, uh, growth. Um, I have seen, especially in South Texas, uh, in the Valley, much work done to very good effect to change policies, whether it is in health or in um, uh, education or voting, by people from the colonias who are The, uh, which are the poorest unincorporated areas in the state, who are working together across sectors, education, health, housing, immigration, um, to make sure that um, families and communities who are poor get an equal voice. So that's another, I think, uh, place is deep South Texas, where we can look to some examples for the rest of the state in how you uh, have the community itself be an important part of the solution. And just one more point, um, Southwest Voter Registration uh, Project has also been involved in doing uh, voter registration drives. And uh, the other thing that they've been doing has to do with um, Um, candidate uh, uh, training in terms of institutes and so forth that, uh, that they've been running the last few years as well.